So welcome back. Um, part four, tutorial 11. Um, it's only been a couple of minutes. So I'm going to pick up straight where I left off, uh, which is we need to turn this now into a form because at the moment we're saying that when hash check account, when this ID is clicked, we're going to pick up an action, which will be the URL for our Ajax call from the form here, but it's not a form at the moment. So I'm going to take check account out of there. I'll just put that in my buffer and I'm going to create the form. So our form will be, whoops, ID. Well, we know what the ID is going to be because that's what we want to pick up when we click on it. And um, the method equals get the action, it won't matter, we, we could leave this out because we're already telling it in the Ajax request it's a get, but this we can't leave out, um, the actual action. Um, and then we're going to say show account, and the action is going to be, um, well let's just say it's get account info.php that'll be fine the show account we're going to turn this into an input we're going to say it's type submit that was why I added the um, return false to actually override using uh, jQuery the default activity which would be to refresh the entire page and submit uh, the entire form so we're going to say it's a submit, um, it, um, its value then is, whoops, show account, whoops, and that should be fine. So let's save that, let's refresh and see what happens, and it's turned it into a button. And that's fine. I don't mind. It can be a button. We, we can style this. We can, we can put a, a class in here of, um, I think I had said that we had a sub a submit button. I think might be the class. No. Okay. But we could style it by styling submit button and actually creating, and I might prettify that in a minute, but let's let's keep going and pushing with the programming. So now we have a button. Now we have something that we can actually see we're clicking on. So save that, um, and let's create a new file. So in here, we're going to have a new PHP file. We know what the name is because we just put the name in here. It's going to be get account info PHP. Um, oh, that's all. I'm in the wrong directory there. Oh. That's the previous one. That's the previous one. Here we go. Those are my practice ones. So, get account info.php. Why do I practice? Well, there would be no point in trying to do these videos if I didn't know it was actually going to work. Um, so, we're going to create the PHP file to take action. So, we've moved in um, at the very start of tutorial 3 the actual um, pre written PHP API code library, if you want to call it that, um, that will actually do the calls and take care of talking uh, to and from software for us. So, that's great. We now need, need to just require these into our um, into our program here so we're going to require them once um, this is a PHP magic constant uh, which is going to resolve the actual position of the file um, so the dir name is where we are, um, and then we've got soft layer. And we're going to use the soap client class. Uh, 
and that will require that in. So once we have that, we then need to set up some um, variables, which will be the username um, and oh, I've got to put one of those on it. We'll fix that in a sec. And our API key. Now, previously, I created uh, an API user, a specific API user called um, software API user one. So that will be our API user. Now we need the key, the actual um, password to get into software. So I save that in here. And we pop it in. And then we're going to say the client is the soft layer soap client. And we're going to get client. You can see it's coming up, it's, it's linked it in. And we're going to say the actual method that we're going to call is the soft layer, oops, case L account. null and then we're going to give it an API username and the API uh, key and this line will actually effectively log us in and call software account. Again you can get loads of information on what all of the methods are, all of the libraries are, um, and what you can do with them. This is just showing you how to use them really quickly. So we're going to try then. Um, I'm going to create an object which is going to call the client, the client up here. And I'm going to say get the object. So my object, client get object, good, that should work. And then we're going to echo. Um, oh, let's make it somewhat sort of pretty. H2 account details. We're going to echo that back. And then we're going to echo, uh, quickly put the results in a table. And then for each of the returned elements in my object as a key and a value, so a key value pair coming back to us, we're going to do echo and table row, table header. And we want the key in the header. Yep, the key in the header. And then we're going to close the header. And then we're going to have an actual table entry. And this will be the value. And we're going to close our table. So that should do it. Uh, catch the exception and let's say just die. Um, so we'll just die if the actual, um, if we actually get an error. So that should do it, but I just want to know what that actual error message is. So I'm going to just save that there and that should when we now run it, actually give us access into software. Okay, so uh, when we're clicking, nothing. 
nothing happening. Now, there's two reasons for that. One is I haven't appended it, but equally, um, I'm not sure anything's actually going on there. So what I'm going to do is do a Command-Alt-J, which will bring up the debug tool. And let's click on it, the debug tool for Chrome, that is. Let's see what's happening. So if I go into Network here, we can see when I click on it, an actual um, call is being made. Let's click on that again. There it is. A call is being made. And let's go and see what it says. The response from that uh, Ajax call is, right, so we've captured the, uh, the die and we've got the message. So that's what's being returned to us. The get message on the die is saying we have an invalid API token. Hmm. Um, right, it all looks fine to me. Um, let me log in to best laid plans and all that. Let's log into software and see that my actual user is valid. So if you go to users, I created specifically an API user here, API account, slappy minus user one, and the API key. So let's view that API key. 32154, 32154, that looks pretty good. So let's take that in again and copy it back into our script. Save that. And let's see what's happening this time. Let's bring this up as well. Show me my account. There's the call. Let's see what it says. Right, invalid API token. So we know the API is fine. So it must be something to do with the username. Slappy minus user. Oh, there we go. Look, I have an underscore. Minus. Save that. Go back in here. Show account. There's the call. Ah, there you go. There is our entire returned values from software. So we know we're getting the return now. So the last thing we need to do is why is our JavaScript, why is it not appending this into the result, which it should be. Hash result, have I not got a hash result? I do have a hash result. Ah, results. Result. The simplest things. The simplest things. Show account. Ah, you have to reload your page because I've modified the JavaScript. Ah, there we go. So I've got my table headers and I've got all my information and that came straight from software, direct from software. Now, what I can do is I can start using all these pieces of information here because this is an object that's been returned and I can actually now write more programming around capturing these individual entities and using those. But I said it was, I was going to keep this simple. That is our first program on how to gain access through the APIs to software from a rudimentary white label portal here that has now gone off, accessed uh, software, gained access through the API gateway, used the uh, standard class created for show account and returned with a get request all of the information that I wanted about my account. So that is how you use the APIs in software. Um, I will finalize the other three elements, the show users, show machines, and then we'll walk through make a virtual machine in subsequent parts. But hopefully that already has given you a, an insight into how to leverage and the power of the APIs with software.